This beautiful ship is the Disney Fantasy. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing 30 tips specifically for the Fantasy. So whether you've cruised with Disney Cruise Line before or this is your very first time, these tips are gonna help you be an absolute pro on your cruise. We're gonna save you time and money and make sure you don't miss a thing. Let's get to it. Hi, I'm Serena from Living by Disney, and normally I'm talking to you about Walt Disney World or other theme parks, but today we're taking it to the sea. I am a huge fan of Disney Cruise Line. I think it's a fantastic way to experience the magic of Disney on your vacation. And while I've loved all the ships, the fantasy happens to be my favorite. I have spent many weeks on this ship and I've collected together all of my best tips and put them in one video for you guys. There is so much to do on a cruise. You're going to have an absolute blast, but I don't want you to miss anything important. So I'll be sharing lots of tips on how to make sure you see it all and make sure you stick around until the end because I'm going to show you the best way to see a ton of characters at one time. Okay, sit down, get comfortable. We've got a lot to cover. Let's start with tip number one. Okay, let's just start with the basics. Make sure you use the Disney Cruise Line app. It is so helpful in making sure you don't miss anything. You won't be able to see your exact itinerary until you get on board, which I know is kind of a bummer. Us planners, we like to know in advance. But as soon as you get on board, you'll be able to see the full week. Don't worry, you'll have plenty of time to look it over and make sure you see it all. As you're looking through your list though, make sure you're noticing that you can heart certain items as a favorite. Make sure you do that because once you do, anything that you've saved as a favorite, you'll get a notification from your app when that thing is about to start. It makes it a lot easier to not miss anything and not have to be glued to your phone. That brings us to our next tip, which is also in the app, the drink of the day. The drink of the day will be listed in your app if you wanna look and see exactly what it is or you can ask any bartender at any lounge. I love this option because it gives you a drink option that's less expensive than normal. Typically they're around five or six dollars, but it does range depending on the drink and the ingredients. I just love the variety and being able to have a drink that sort of is a reflection of the ports and places that you're visiting. And you can also get the drinks at your dining room during dinner. While I love the drink of the day, you know what's even better? a free drink. There's actually one night on every cruise on the fantasy that's formal night where everyone gets super dressed up. And on formal night in the atrium, there are complimentary cocktails and drinks for all guests. It's really cool. They walk around with them on trays. You can get all different kinds of cocktails, champagne, etc. Definitely worth mentioning because if you're running late for dinner and you dash in, you might completely miss this. So stop by the atrium on formal night and enjoy the cocktails. If you're not much of a drinker or you have little ones with you, another kind of fun fact is our next tip. Shirley Temples are free at dinner and you can order as many of them as you want and they just make a nice little fun drink that you can have without any alcohol. Complimentary room service is offered on every Disney Cruise Line. It's awesome, it's 24 hours a day. The menu is listed right on your Disney Cruise Line app but there are secret items that are not listed on the menu and you might wanna know about them. Secret item number one that is my favorite, Mickey bars. You can get Mickey bars at any time. All you have to do is call and order them and someone will bring you Mickey's premium ice cream bars on a tray straight to your room. If that is not living your best life, I don't know what is. Secret menu item number two you definitely are gonna to wanna to know about is our next tip cake of the day. Yep, every single day there's a cake of the day that is featured from the room service menu. It's not listed on there. You have to request it and ask for it. And why wouldn't you get this? Who doesn't love cake? I always want to try it and see what it is. It's always fantastic. Get the cake of the day. Why not? Our next tip is another secret food item. Don't you love secret food things? I do. This one is a secret snack buffet. This happens in the adult entertainment area on the Disney cruise ships. It's right next to the carousel bar, kind of just as you're walking towards the tube. This snack buffet is usually available for a short time each night, usually around 10.15 to 10.30, and it's out for about an hour. Feel free to eat as much as you want while you're having fun down in that entertainment area. Our next tip, 
decorate your stateroom door. This is a really big one for newbies. If you've never done a Disney cruise, you're going to be a little caught off guard by this and maybe feel a little left out that your door is looking a little plain. All of the stateroom doors on Disney Cruise Line ships are magnetic. So anything that's magnetic will stick to them. And what has become quite a thing to do is to decorate your stateroom door with different magnets. So I walked around the ship and found a lot of different fun ones that I could share with you guys to give you a little bit of inspiration, give you some ideas of what you can do. You can get really creative with this. I see so many different things. You can put your names up there. Some people will get a separate magnet for every Disney cruise that they do and sort of add to it like a collection as they go. That's kind of cool because you can get a sense of just how many times they've cruised and maybe like what cruises they've been on. Some people will put a little magnet for each person in their room. So sort of like a little character that maybe represents them or something. It's just like a really cool way to personalize your door, make it really easy to find and it's just fun. I recommend looking for magnets on Etsy. There's a lot of great Etsy shops. I'll put one of my favorites in the description below. Just make sure that you're looking for a full magnet and not like a laminated piece of paper that has magnets stuck on the back so you get a nice quality. This leads me to my next tip which goes hand in hand with the door magnets and that is fish extenders. This, this requires some explanation. Let me explain what they are. Fish extenders are a hanging gift bag that you put outside of your door. They usually have like the names of the family members that are traveling together and they're hung up on the clip that is next to everyone's door. On the first cruises, they used to always be a fish. So that's why they were called fish extenders. Now on other ships, they're not always a fish. So the name doesn't always make sense, but everybody knows them as fish extenders, but they're used like a little mailbox. And the way this works is that you can be sort of a secret Santa to your fellow passengers by leaving them little gifts in their fish extender. Now, a lot of people will take this up another level by going on Disney message boards or on Facebook groups. And if you wanna really get into it, there'll be a Facebook group for the cruise you're in, but that lets you give other gifts to people in your group. Everyone will share their stateroom door number and you can go around the ships doing that. I like to get a little few things from Etsy when I'm ordering magnets and just sort of randomly gift them as I walk around the ship. I just think it's fun and it's a way to add a little extra pixel dust while you're on your cruise. All right, next tip is all about rotational dining. This is Disney Cruise Line's way of making sure that all the guests get to enjoy all of the three themed dining venues while they're on board. There's three main restaurants. You're gonna rotate through them all. You'll get your restaurant schedule and your table number when you board the ship. It'll be there in your app. And then each evening, you and your table mates and your servers will all rotate to a different restaurant. And as they rotate, you're going to get different menus at each restaurant. So even though in a week long cruise, you're going to get to experience each restaurant at least two times, maybe three on one of them, but you're gonna get different menus every single time. So let's talk briefly about the three main restaurants. So first one is Enchanted Garden. This one might be my favorite, although it's really hard to pick. For each evening meal, Enchanted Garden transforms itself from day to night. They say that the ambiance and the decor here is based off of Versailles, and it definitely has that feeling of being like in an outdoor conservatory or garden. You're surrounded by white trellises and arches and beautiful landscapes surrounding you. The lighting actually becomes part of the entire artwork and the whole mood of the restaurant changes as you move from daytime to nighttime. I even love the details of the light fixtures above you. They're designed like glass flowers and they actually bloom as night falls and they become more colorful and the rest of the garden changes as well. The stars will sparkle in the night sky and the restaurant is finished off with a centerpiece of a beautiful tall fountain creating this nice little water feature. It's just a beautiful restaurant. Next up is Royal Court. As you can maybe imagine from the name is based on the classic princesses and the restaurant serves French inspired cuisine and it's very elegant, very upscale. It's the most sort of formal feeling of all of the restaurants on board. There are inspiration from the princesses all throughout the restaurant, Cinderella, Snow White, you'll see Belle in there from Beauty and the Beast, you'll see Aurora from Sleeping Beauty. It's really designed to look like a palace. And so there are beautiful chandeliers, the lighting fixtures I love because they look like Cinderella's carriage, mosaic tile murals of the princesses everywhere. It's just a beautiful, elegant dining room. You're gonna find some of your more fancier dinners as far as the menus are concerned are gonna be at Royal Court. 
And the third restaurant is called Animator's Palette. And this entire restaurant is based on classic Disney animation, which is really cool. This restaurant is the most like a show. There's special themed dinners that happen here. And that brings us to our next tip. There are dinner shows inside the animator's palette and there's two different ones that you're gonna get in your week long cruise. The first one is called Undersea Magic. And because there's screens and lighting all over the restaurant that changes, the entire tone of the restaurant changes based on which theme you have. So Undersea Magic is kind of like Turtle Talk with Crush at Epcot. If you've ever been to that little show, it's based on the Finding Nemo characters and it's an interactive dinner show. They actually come and chat in real time with guests at your table. Like they're actually talking to you. It's super cute. It's really, really fun. And then the second themed sort of dinner show that you're gonna get at Animator's Palette is called Animation Magic. This one's my favorite because it's very interactive. When you're seated, you're going to get to draw your own animated character and then the servers will collect those completed drawings and then later on, they're gonna show up as animation on the screens all around your room and you get to have your drawings back at the end for like a really cool souvenir. The software that they use to make these drawings come to life is so fun. It literally makes them dance and inserts them into different scenes from classic animation. I think it's such a nice touch. It just gives you a little extra magic to your dinner that night. Now, while we're on the subject of dining, I wanna talk about our next tip, which is that your servers will actually rotate and stay with you the whole week. And if you've not done a Disney cruise before, this may not sound like a big deal, but let me tell you, it is one of the nicest features. The reason is that your servers are going to be fantastic. I can guarantee this because I've never been on a Disney cruise that I did not get super attached to my servers. I'm telling you, they are the most amazing people you're gonna meet. You're gonna so enjoy getting to know them throughout your cruise. And the best thing is they get to know you. Their entire job while they're there is to make sure that you have everything you need. And that means they're learning you each night that you dine with them. So as you go along, they're going to learn exactly what you like. And if you have children and you're dining here with children, this is where this is going to become priceless for you. Because when you sit down to your dinner each night, they are going to have everything in place for your children. You need a high chair, it's already gonna be there. Whatever you typically like them to drink, whatever they wanna drink, it's gonna be there. Not only is it gonna be there, it's going to be in a little spill-proof cup ready for them. They're gonna have crowns on the table. They're gonna have coloring things. They're going to have things that they do to entertain your children during the dinner when they get antsy. No need to re-explain any allergies or any type of meal issues you have. That personalized touch adds so much to your cruise experience, you're gonna love it. Next tip, it's happy hour. One of the amazing things about the Disney Fantasy is all of the awesome themed lounges and bars that are all over the ship. There are so many, so many fun places to go and have a drink. And the cool thing is that they actually have happy hours. So if you check your app again, you're going to see the happy hours scheduled throughout the days and they do stagger them. So they're not always like overlapping. One of my favorites was always at O'Gill's, but you're gonna see it at a lot of different locations. So make sure to check that out and save yourself a little bit of money on your drinks. Speaking of lounges, you should know that if you happen to be on board with a sports fan or maybe during a big sports game, you're not gonna miss it. O'Gill's, which is the Irish pub themed bar in the adult area, is going to have the game on all their televisions. So just plan on going in there and enjoying the game. Now, if it's a really big game, like a playoff game or something, they might even have that playing on the giant screen on the funnel so you can check on that as well. But don't worry, you're not gonna miss anything while you're on board. You'll still see your favorite team play. Now, even though dinner you will be ordering off of a menu, keep in mind our next tip, which is that you can order as much as you want. There is no limit. This is not like one appetizer, one entree, one dessert per person. Oh, no, no, no. If you're trying to decide between two different things or three different things, get them all. Your server will definitely recommend you do this as well. There is no limit to how much you can have. It's one of the fun perks of having this sort of all-inclusive type of vacation. So make sure you enjoy it. Don't be shy. I mean, after all, you're on vacation and we all know that calories don't count at Disney, so they certainly don't count on a Disney cruise ship, right? So enjoy. Next tip, consider booking a meal at Palo, which is the adults-only 
upcharge restaurant on the Disney Fantasy. Now you definitely don't have to do this. This is completely optional. So if you just wanna to stick to the things that are included in your cruise, you're still gonna have an amazing time. But Palo is a small upcharge and it is going to probably be the best meal you're gonna have on your cruise. I just can't like emphasize this enough. It is so fantastic. Now it is adults only. Keep in mind, you've got those kids clubs to utilize so you can have a little adults only time. Palo is an Italian restaurant. It has has unbelievable ambiance. It's located in one of the most beautiful parts of the ship. Gorgeous views. The Mediterranean cuisine is unbelievable. The pasta is homemade. Everything is like made to order. They do a brunch and a dinner. I highly recommend both. I think I like brunch a little bit more. I like being able to have a mix of like breakfast food and regular meals and entrees. I think their chicken parmesan is like my absolute favorite of all time. And if you are gluten-free, they make an incredible gluten-free version of chicken parmesan. Incredible desserts. Their cheese plates are phenomenal. Their flatbreads are amazing. Can't say enough good things about this one. Do not miss it. Now, for my next tip, if you didn't manage to get that Palo reservation before the cruise, don't worry. Once you're on board, there's almost always some last minute spots available for people to book when they get on the ship. If that happened to you, don't worry, you can still get in. When you get on board the cruise on your first day, go down to Enchanted Garden and they're gonna have tables set up right there on deck two and they'll be able to get you a time and get you in. Next tip. Who doesn't want some cute Disney character coffee? Cove Cafe is one of my favorite places to hang out on the Disney Fantasy. I love a coffee shop in general. Like in my normal routine, I love going to coffee shops. Cove Cafe is like the Disney Fantasy coffee shop. It's got the most amazing vibes. The whole ambiance of this place is perfect. And they craft personalized latte art and they have a ton of Disney characters that they can use and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. If you get anything with foam, they can put a character on it. They can put the name of the cruise ship. They'll take requests, you know, whatever you want to do, you can put it on there. And it just adds such a nice little touch to your coffee. And if you're Instagramming your trip, it's an adorable Instagram moment, just so you know. Our next tip has to do with Cove Cafe and that is that the bakery case in the Cove Cafe, all those little treats you see, they're free. And I did not realize that on my first time on the Disney Fantasy, and I was really annoyed that I didn't realize that. So even though your fancy lattes and things will be a little extra charged, they're not totally free. The extra fancy coffee drinks have a little bit of an upcharge, but everything in this case is complimentary. So I don't want you to miss out on that. Our next tip is consider staying on the ship. When you're on your cruise, you're gonna visit some really cool ports of call and they go to some awesome places. The fantasy, as of this video right now, goes to Eastern and Western Caribbean. So you're going to go to some beautiful islands. Eastern is gonna take you to St. Thomas and Tortola, and the Western is gonna take you to Grand Cayman and Jamaica and Cozumel. They're all gonna to go to Disney's islands, but you're gonna to go to some really fun places. However, if none of those places are really exciting you, please remember that you do have the option to actually stay on the ship. And when you're at a port, a ton of people are going to get off the ship. And that means whoever stays on board is going to have it kind of to themselves. You're going to enjoy the pool with fewer crowds. It's a great time to do the slide. Like anything that you're interested in doing that's normally maybe a little bit more crowded, that's the best time to do it. So my advice is consider staying on board or maybe coming back early and enjoying a less crowded ship. But that comes with a word of caution. And my next tip is do not stay on board when you visit Disney's private island, Castaway Key, because that one is 100% worth it. Don't miss out on that. You do not want to stay on the ship when you go to Castaway Key. It's almost always the last place you visit on your Disney fantasy trip. So it's usually on that Friday. And it is so much fun. Pristine beaches. You can snorkel there. They've got every water sport you can imagine. The beaches are beautiful. It's the most convenient place to visit. You just hop off the ship and you're right there. And the cool thing is that you're going to get an amazing meal while you're there. They have incredible food cooked at these restaurants. It's a barbecue dinner. They have the ice cream machine there they have the soda machines there and it's all included so it's just such a nice little perk they have shopping they have tons of sports and things for you to do they do a 5k there in the morning if you want to get up a little extra early and get out on the on the walking trails there on the island there's a ton to offer there so do not miss castaway key on your disney fantasy cruise 
All right, this next tip is for those who are traveling with kiddos on their cruise. Let me just tell you that Disney Cruise Line has the best kids club of any cruise. As we walk around, this is the Oceaneer Club and the Oceaneer Lab. These themed areas are amazing. And the reason I can show you this, even though I don't have a child this age, is because they have open houses. And this is such a perfect time to go in and check it out. When you get on board, check your app and notice the open houses on that first and second day and try to schedule some time to take your kids in there. And it's such a great opportunity for you as the parents to go in with them and play and interact with them. So if you have one, that's maybe a little more hesitant, they're not quite so quick to jump into something new, this is a great way for, to get them used to it and to sort of see what it's all about, get them excited about it because they have amazing activities the entire day. And as you can see, just the spaces that they have are phenomenal. They do special activities where they actually bring in entertainment and characters for the kids to do just here while they're there. And it's the coolest thing. I honestly wish I could hang out here. The Oceaneer Club and the Oceaneer Lab are for ages three to 10. And then there's the Edge Club. That's sort of the tween one. That's ages 11 to 14. And then Vibe is the teen club. That's ages 14 to 17. And then there's, it's a small world nursery and that's for kids under three. So as long as they're potty trained and three, they can go into the Oceaneer Club and the Oceaneer Lab. That'll give you a little bit of adult time and the kids are gonna have a phenomenal time. So don't miss those open houses to check those out on the first day or two. All right, for our next tip, it's time to play detective. This fun game is called Midship Detective Agency and it's like a scavenger hunt that happens all over the ship. You can do it at any time you want. They give you clues, you solve puzzles, and it's gonna send you all over the ship to figure out the solution to a mystery. There's three different ones you can do. I love the Muppets one and I love the villains one. Those are really super fun. And basically it's like the art in the ship at different places you interact with. So you're going to get these special cards and when you stand on this spot and hold the card up, then it's going to give you clues and you're going to follow these clues throughout all over the ship until you find out and solve the mystery. It's super fun. It's a really good time. Don't miss out on doing this. And if I could add a little bonus tip here, do this one on your first day or two if you can, because the way that it does send you all over the ship, you're actually gonna learn the layout so quickly. It's a great thing to do when you're newly on board. Next tip is to bring a water bottle, preferably one that will seal up and you can throw in your bag that won't spill. This is just so handy. Soda and water are free up on the decks, but if you want to get a soda and have it brought to your room by room service, they're going to charge you. And that's just silly because you can just go up a few floors and get your own for free. So bring yourself a little water bottle and that way when you happen to be up there, you can just fill it up and then bring it to anywhere you want on the ship, but it's really nice to have one in your room when you need it. Our next tip is for those who love to really dive into the decoration and the theming and the style of how these beautiful ships are decorated. They actually do a walking tour that's offered several times throughout your cruise. It's called Art of the Theme. And it's very easy to miss on the navigator schedule. They have really knowledgeable guides and they're gonna walk you through the ship and talk about how it was put together, how it's decorated, really fascinating stories that they have of how the ship was designed and put together. And if you're an Imagineering geek like me, you're gonna really enjoy learning about all the details. Our next tip is watching the fireworks at sea. This is the coolest thing that Disney does. I mean, what other cruise ship? has fireworks when you're out in the middle of the ocean. It's just such a cool way to cap off a great show. And on the Disney Fantasy, they're always gonna do it on pirate night at the end of the night. That last pirate show is usually going to be around 10 or so in the evening, and fireworks will be at the end of that pirate show. Now, if you do the Pixar Day at Sea, they add an additional fireworks showing there, so you may get more than one, but for sure, you'll always have it on your pirate night. Now, where to stand? If you're down on the deck where the show is happening, so that's on deck 11, where the stage is for the show, if you're down there, it's actually kind of hard to see the fireworks because it's very easy to have it blocking your view a little bit. So if you really wanna prioritize seeing the fireworks, I would recommend you watch on deck 12. That way you're up above 
the actual show stage, it's just gonna allow you to be up a little higher and see the fireworks a little bit better. Ideally, port side is a little bit better view, but either is really gonna work fine. Just aim for deck 12, and if in doubt, just ask some of the crew that you see walking around what side of the ship the fireworks will be, and that'll help you figure it out. My next tip is make sure you do not miss any of the Disney shows that happen at the theater each night. Your Fantasy Cruise is going to have several of them. Currently, they are offering Frozen, Aladdin, and their original show, Believe. And all three of those are incredible Broadway caliber shows. They happen in the big Walt Disney Theater. It's a nice big theater. Try to prioritize seeing them because the talent is incredible. These shows are really popular because all seasoned cruisers know not to miss them. So make sure you go, I would say about a half hour before the show and grab yourself some seats. Some people can leave and come back. You can very easily save some seats for those who are with you. It's not like a stressful thing, but I just wanna make sure you get a spot because these shows are fantastic. While we're on the topic of theaters, they show lots of movies during your cruise, and you may not have realized that, but Disney shows big movies while they're on the cruise. Some are more classics, and some are even first-run Disney films. So make sure you check out the theater schedule. They'll list all the movies there. It's just it's really cool. That brings us to our next tip, which is that there are popcorn buckets on board, and a lot of people love their Disney popcorn buckets, but there's also a refillable popcorn bucket that they have on the ship, and I actually love it because it's got all the Disney ships here on the popcorn bucket so it just makes like a nice souvenir you can buy it at the little concession stand by the theater and throughout the duration of your cruise refills are only a dollar fifty we got our money's worth out of that thing we refilled it a bunch for our whole group and it was just really nice anytime we watched a show and for our last and final tip one last farewell Disney finishes the cruise on the final night with a show called Till We Meet Again. And I don't know if it's really a show, but it's just a, a final little goodbye to wrap up the cruise. And at the very end of the evening, they bring out all the characters, and I mean tons of them. They come downstairs all throughout the atrium on all three levels, and they meet guests. So this is a great way, if you've missed any characters throughout your cruise, this is the best way to do it. So remember this is like your backup plan B, the till we meet again, when you see it on your, on your navigator, make sure to catch it, and you can get any last minute character photos that you wanna see, and just have a nice little goodbye to end your cruise. And that will do it for our 30 tips for the Disney fantasy. Now here's where you come in. If we miss any tips and you have some to add to our list, please, please, please leave them in a comment so others can read through the comments and get even more information to help make their trip better. I really hope that you enjoyed this and that it helped you get excited for your cruise or maybe pushed you to go ahead and book that trip. Don't forget to like this video. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe. We share tons of tips to help make your trip to Walt Disney World, Orlando, and Disney Cruise Line just a little more magical. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.